Hello, my name is Sheena Matos. I'm a mindset life coach and meditation practitioner. Today's video is going to be a little different than my normal content as I usually post out the positive thinking and law of attraction and getting that mindset where you want it to be. But today's video is going to be kind of heavy, a little dark, and very emotional. We are going to talk about grief. As a life coach, it's my job to take you through some of the best moments of your life, but also some of the worst. And as we all know, grief, death is something that we all eventually have to deal with. I feel like a lot of people try to avoid it or push it under the rug or not talk about it. But the truth is, is that everybody is eventually going to have to deal with some of these emotions. So in today's video, I would like to share with you my story of grief as I've lost both of my parents and how I dealt with them, my emotional state and things like that. And my, my intention is that it will help you if you're going through it, or maybe if you know someone else going through it, help you know what to do, or what to say. Um, you know, everybody deals with it differently. So these are just my techniques and tactics that I used or the emotions that I went through. Um, this video is going to be a little bit long, little bit long <clears throat> excuse me. So I am warning you, fair warning, because I am going to share my stories of everything that I went through. So if you're willing <laughs> and you're able, go ahead and continue listening. Let's talk about death for a moment. The subject that we all dread, but it's inevitable. Some of your friends may not have lost that many people in their lives yet. So when they talk to you, they say things like, I'm so sorry. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Yet secretly inside, they're truly hoping you don't call because, let's face it, they have no idea what to say to you. People will console you for a little while. But when weeks turn into months, they say, it's time for you to move on. Let them go. Get over it. What they don't understand is you never just get over it. Then comes the one that made me the most angry after I lost my mom. And that was, you know she's not really gone, right? Okay, of course I know what they mean. I'm a spiritual person. I get it. But in the moment, as the words flowed from their lips, all I wanted to say was, of course she's gone, you idiot. I can't touch her, see her, talk to her. She is gone, gone away from my everyday reality. People stop knowing how to act around you, stop knowing what to say. So the phone just stops ringing, which Let's face it, makes things even worse because the silence is so deafening. Pretty soon, no one calls, no one comes to visit, and everyone goes back to their daily lives. But you, you have to somehow go on living without that person. Depression sets in as you begin to feel very alone. The days blend together until you realize it's been a whole year that's passed and you can't even remember it. It seems like everything just happened. How could it have been a year already? What I have found is that sadness comes in waves. Some days you wake up and for a moment you actually forget they're gone. Then something will happen that makes you wanna call them or you'll see something that reminds you of them and boom, it all comes flooding back again. They say that time heals things, but all it really does is mask the grief. It's no longer the first thing that you think about. Memories begin to surface and perhaps make you smile sometimes, and you think about things that they would have loved to do. Life begins to feel good again. You get glimpses of normality. Then a song will play, a movie will come on, or something will remind you of them, and you've lost it again a bucket of tears that you can't stop no matter how hard you try. Grief 
grief. We all experience it differently. But let me tell you my story. When I was 15 years old, I lost my dad. He had a massive heart attack while he was at work, literally dropping dead in the back of his work truck. They tried to call my mom, but couldn't reach her for some reason, so they called me out of class. I was on the phone in the front office when the lady on the other end had told me what had happened. I dropped to my knees in the middle of a busy high school front office and wept. When I realized where I was, I called my mom. She answered, and we went to go see my dad, who was on life support with no brainwaves. At the time, it didn't feel real. I honestly was out of touch with reality. I don't even think I cried for at least a month or two after he was gone. It wasn't real. I couldn't even remember people talking to me at his funeral. I was a literal zombie, going through the motions of life, but not really dealing with it. I'm an only child, so one thing this experience did do is bring me and my mom so much closer. If you want to hear the whole story of this, it was published in a book called Open to Hope, and I can leave the link below if you'd like to read it. Years passed, and I grew up and got married. I did know of friends from school passing away and family members, but at this point, I felt like I could deal with death. I've done it before, right? After being married for about a year, I ended up having my first miscarriage. This was a whole new hurt. This was a guilty hurt because something was wrong with me. I had done something, and the guilt and blame really broke me. I felt like a horrible mom. How could my body reject this precious gift from God? Was there something wrong with me? I mean, I know the doctor said it wasn't my fault, but it had to be. I killed my baby. Did I stand too close to the microwave? Did I eat something that was too spicy? Or maybe I hit my stomach and didn't realize it or took a bath that was too hot. Maybe we shouldn't have had sex the week before. Yeah, these were my actual thoughts. Then I decided that, you know what? I didn't want to do this again. I didn't want to try again. This was too much to deal with. We had already had one healthy daughter. Why tempt fate again? Two years pass, and I end up having a second miscarriage. This time was even worse than the first. We had actually been trying again since my husband and I both were only children. We decided we wanted our daughter to have a sibling. We didn't want her to grow up alone like we did. Everything seemed fine this time around. I'm just at 11 weeks, at that point where it's almost okay, right? We're we're over that little hump that they say not to tell anybody. We're almost there. We're going for our 11-week checkup. This is a really exciting appointment because we're getting an ultrasound today. Everything seems to be normal until the ultrasound lady turns the camera away from me and asks my husband to step out of the room. I see a look on her face, and I know something isn't right. So she tells me that she's having a hard time finding the heartbeat, and she's going to do an internal ultrasound instead. So she inserts it and finally finds a faint but very slow heartbeat. I hear it on the monitor. Bump, 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 ba-bump, and then nothing. I literally listened to the very last beat of my baby's heart. I heard my baby die inside of me. The lady is not a doctor, so she's trying not to seem alarmed and being very, very careful with what she's saying because I'm asking a million questions. She rushes me to the ER, and we do it all over again, all to confirm what I already knew inside. My baby was dead. They scheduled me for an emergency DNC. That whole experience had me devastated. It took a whole year for me to even want to try again with my husband. That one broke us both. 
My husband didn't even want to be intimate with me in fear that this would happen again. It took almost a year for us to even touch each other. Time did end up healing us as we did try again the following year, and we got our second daughter. Then, five years later, we got a very special surprise of a beautiful little son. But death was not done with me, as it had another really big one to lay on me that nothing, no one, could prepare me for. Only one year after my son was born, my beloved mother suffered a massive heart attack and passed away in the back of an ambulance. I spoke to her only hours before as I talked to my mom multiple times a day. She had been complaining about a heartburn, so I told her to call her doctor. She did, and she made an appointment, and that's when they realized that she had had a mild heart attack that night before, and they rushed her to the hospital. She texted me from the ambulance, letting me know not to worry, telling me where she was going, and that she was fine. So, I leave work and rush to the hospital, thinking everything would be fine. When I got there, the doctor calls me into the room and sits me down. He tells me my mom didn't make it. She died in the ambulance, and they tried everything to revive her, but her heart was fried. I didn't even get to say goodbye. I fell down in a fetal position and just rocked. It was like a scene from a movie. What do I do now? Wait a minute. This can't be right. They have the wrong person. My mom is healthy as a horse. She's the life of the party. I just spoke to her. She's not gone. They must not be talking about my mom. I have to see her. I composed myself and said to the nurse, can I see my mom? They take me to her, and I am still half expecting to see someone else. But there she is, my beautiful, sweet mother, the face I would know anywhere. It's her. Wait, her body's still warm. Maybe she'll come back to me. If I sit here beside her long enough, pray hard enough, just maybe she'll come back to me. She just looks like she's sleeping. Wake up, Mom. Please wake up. She knows I can't do this life without her. She's my best friend. She can't leave me here alone. I'll stay until she wakes up. As the hours tick by, her body begins to get cold. And I begin to realize that she really is gone. She's not coming back. I had to go through this all on my own as my husband was home with the kids. And the drive home that night was the longest drive of my life. Nothing felt real. When I finally walked into my house, I'm greeted by my three kids and my husband. And we all collapse in each other's arms and we all cry on our knees for what seemed like hours. They loved their Nana. And life would never be the same without her. There were many things that I did to deal with my mom's passing. One was to start a podcast. That really seemed to help me because I was able to really just talk about my feelings. And because my mom was my best friend, my prayer partner, and my everything, not having her there to talk to really was a void in my life. So having the podcast really helped me. So what I'd encourage my clients to do is to find someone to talk to, find some way to get your thoughts out, writing them out, speaking about them. And if you don't want to go on live and do something where the whole world can hear you, maybe just record it for yourself. It's just really good to get your feelings out there. This is where a life coach or a therapist or just a really good friend can come into play. Having someone to share your feelings with and emotions with and Just having someone to help you go through it really makes a huge difference. So to be completely transparent, it took about two whole years before I was really able to come out of the depression, of the loneliness, of the void of losing my mom. But one thing that it did do is it forced me to find my own spiritual journey. As I was saying, my mom was my prayer partner, my best friend. She was my everything, and I didn't make any decisions without consulting her first. What that did is it made me very dependent on my mom. As an only child, of course, who else would I be dependent on, right? But without her, I had to grow up. 
I had no choice. I couldn't lean on my mom for support anymore. And what that did is it really opened me up to my spiritual gifts, my abilities, and also brought me onto the path of becoming a life coach. Now, knowing what I know now, of course, I would still want my mom back in my life, but I know that it was part of her purpose to help me on my own journey, and she can do that now so much more than she ever could as a being living here on earth. I have a really good relationship with her now, as I can speak to her and ask her questions and get answers in a way that I know are helping me through things. So it took me a really long time to get to this point. And for a while, even thinking about talking to my mom without actually talking to her was kind of a weird feeling. I was angry with her for quite a while for leaving me. And I know it's not her fault, but I kept thinking, why would she leave me? Why would she do this to me? She knows I need her as if she had a choice in the matter, right? Learning from Dolores Cannon and knowing some of the things that I know now, I realized that we actually choose our own death. I know that seems really weird. Sometimes accidents happen, of course, but for the most part, we choose our own death. And I know that my mom wouldn't have wanted to go any other way because she's told me many times that she just wanted to drop dead, just like my dad did. And well, guess what? She did. So I feel like she already kind of knew that was going to happen. She chose that to happen. And even though I wish I could see her again and be with her and I would give anything to have her alive in this world with me in this being, I am so grateful that I did get to spend the hours and the time that I did with her because it's made me the person I am now. And I do have a relationship with my mom, even though she's crossed over. It's a different relationship, of course, but I know that I can depend on her and ask her things, and she will send me the right people and send me guidance at this point. She's helping me in a way now that she never could on this earth. So now that I have that understanding, it makes death a little bit easier to digest, even though the feelings, the emotions, and all of those different steps still have to be taken to go through it. Now I'm at the point that I can look on the outside of it and say, okay, I can understand it a little bit more. Now, I don't know the path that you're going through, and I don't know what's happening to you right now, but if you are grieving, just know there is light at the end of the tunnel, and it may take a long time, but one day, one day, you're going to start to understand things. I don't know when that's going to be or how it's going to happen for you, but it will. I can promise you it will. Because in the end, when you lose somebody, every candle, every prayer is not going to make up for the fact that the only thing that you have left is a hole in your life where that somebody that you cared about used to be. Death is really the beginning. And I know that sounds really crazy because ultimately it's the end of a life. But when someone dies, especially someone significant to you, It causes a chain reaction. It causes a ripple. It causes something to awaken in you that may not have awakened before. So when you're ready, you can start looking and finding the details of what path you're supposed to take. And if you'll let me, I would love to walk with you on your journey, on your journey through these emotions, on your journey of life, and on your journey through grief, through death. Because it really isn't the end. It's only the beginning. How can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side. And now you're going to be with me for the last ride. It's been a long day without you, my friend. Thank you for listening. I know this was quite different than what I've posted in the past. But um, it was definitely emotional for me to record that, as you can imagine. And there's a lot of things that I left out, um, unfortunately, because I wanted to make sure that this wasn't too, too long. Um, A lot of people that helped me along the way, a lot of emotions that I went through along the way. Um, One of the things I will say is that Human Meets Being uh, with Sarah actually was my Reiki coach. And if it wasn't for her, I might still be in the depths of despair. So she was really helpful with the Reiki to just 
get me out of my funk and to release all of those sad emotions and help my heart center. Um, also, I did some uh, body code or emotion code. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that, but it's amazing. And my coach was named uh, Selena. If you guys want any of their information, let me know. So I did emotion code and I did Reiki. Those are two things that really jump started my recovery, I guess. Um, but really you never get over a death. I mean, you just don't, there's going to be things that happen that are just going to bring you right back to that moment. Um, it's never gone. There's always that void. You're always going to feel it. Right. Um, so that's really what this video is all about. Grief looks different for everybody. You know, you may think, you know, what grief looks like because of TV and crying all the time and depression. That's some parts of it, right? But you also have the people who go on with their lives and they really don't interact with it. They don't, they don't have the emotional attachment to it, right? But they're still dealing with it. They're still dealing with it in their own way. And so it doesn't look the same for everyone. You may think, oh, this person is so happy. Of course they're fine. But truthfully, they're dealing with a lot of heavy emotions and you just never know it. So grief has many, many different faces. And so don't just judge a book by its cover, right? As you've heard that saying, and it's so true. It's really true because you never really know what somebody's going through. You never know. Um, if you would not have heard my story, you may have never known all of the grief that I've been through, all of the death that I've experienced. And then also last year, my husband lost his mom of cancer. So I was able to help him through that because of what I went through. So we've had a lot of loss and, um, you know, it's unfortunately, it's something that everybody has to deal with. We just ended up having a lot of loss all at once. <laughs> so it was a lot, it was a lot, but you know what, in this life, I've learned many, many lessons and that's what this is, right? Our life here is a school. We are learning, we are developing, we're getting skills, right? So that's really what we're here for is to experience all these things, learn from it so that we can help others through it. So what you're going through, you're not alone, even though I know you feel you're alone, but you're not, and it may not be the exact same situation, but somebody out there can understand it and can feel it. And it's your job to help them through it too, right? Because that's what this is all about. You go through these experiences so that you can help others. I really, really hope that you got something out of this video. I know that it's long and I do apologize, but thank you for sticking around. I love you so much. I want to hear from you. Visit my website. It's divine and divine is spelled D E V I N E love coaching divine love coaching.com. That's divine love coaching.com or on social media divine spelled D E V I N E love coaching on social media, love and light. I love you so much. I'm not quite sure how to breathe without you here. I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to say goodbye to all we were. Leave with me. Stay with me.